All right, welcome into another edition of Catching Up with Tommy Mac Podcast here in the 1010XL studios and on the 1010XL platform, of course. 1010XL.com, 1010XL app. You know the drill. You know where to find all the great content that's done out of this studio and, of course, uh, the studio through these walls. You can listen to the daily uh, lineup right here on 1010 XL. Great one, no doubt about it. I hope you're feeling good. Great, uh, great to be alive. Happy Friday to you all. And uh, hope life is treating you all great. It's great to be back from the Keys. We got back Wednesday. Uh, just an awesome, awesome time hanging out with our friends, Robbie and Jennifer Bruss down there. They had quite the Mac Daddy home, no doubt about it. It's pretty awesome. But we had a great time, as we always do. Beautiful part of the country down there. I'm not a huge boating type guy. I don't really fish that much. But I tell you what, if you are, you need to head to Almorada down in the Keys. I know a lot of you uh, have done that, of course. Uh, this show brought to you by Team Tommy Mac. Just a Awesome group of businesses that I love and I'm honored to promote here on this show and other shows and all over social media. Before we get any further, because we got a lot to get into and a lot going on in Duval, let's say hello to Grammage. It's been a few. Hey, Grammage, what's up? Good morning, sir. Happy Friday. How are we doing? You got your hairs clipped. Oh, yeah. You got something good today, don't you? Oh, yeah. Got uh, got engagement pictures. All right. uh, Got to clean it up, man. Indeed, I was uh, I was starting to look pretty scraggly on yep. the ends. So I, I didn't cut off a ton, but uh, just just had to clean it up. And so did the fiance pick out the wardrobe, or did you get a chance to pick it out yourself? Uh, we shopped together. She wanted me to go. get a new shirt for it. Got to be coordinated, no doubt. Yeah. Yep. So we we shopped together. She wanted me to get a new shirt. She she loves any excuse to buy new clothes. Okay. See, I don't. I, I wouldn't buy another I, new yeah, shirt for really the rest care. of my life. Yeah, I'm the same. Yeah. Um but we bought we bought a shirt and, and it was like it was stuff I liked. There were like three shirts I liked, and then she picked her favorite one. So okay. Kind yeah. of a, kind of a mix. It's gotta be coordinated. We got an awesome engagement picture up in our room, my wife and I, um, gosh, twenty five years ago, in front of this old rustic uh, pickup truck in this like a farm almost. It was Susan Michael did our pictures. It was it's a great shot, man. Totally great. So you know, good good for you, man. It's a great time in your life, no doubt about it, man. So a lot going on in the nine hundred four schedule. We'll start with the schedule. Schedule is out. Uh, two primetime games, both on the road. Of course, London's two. You know, you uh, you understand that they're going to be on primetime on that. So four primetime games for the twenty twenty four Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Monday night at Buffalo, week three, and then Sunday night at Philly. Uh, pretty good schedule. Here's the thing about schedules you know you can go down and everybody's going to do it and i'm sure i'm not doing it on this show because i'm just going to give a number (laughs) i'm not going to go through it because i i don't i don't this team to me is still nine or ten wins until i see different i'm not buying into the hype i bought into it last year they started off fine at eight and three and still were kind of you know kind of clunky getting there with the offense not really doing that great defense holding the fourth down and then we know what happened so you know, I, I don't know. Look, I hope for the best, of course. Uh, but you look on paper, it's pretty good schedule, man. Pretty tough, tough schedule. And a lot of variables to that, right? How does Houston respond to the success? Well, we didn't respond very well to it. Will they respond better? Uh, I don't know. Remains to be seen. Will Stroud have a sophomore slump, quote unquote? Remains to be seen, right? We don't, we don't know that. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, New York Jets. What if he comes back into the old Aaron Rodgers? And they become a formidable team, at least for the year. Who knows? We don't know. Maybe it won't. Maybe maybe it won't. The chemistry won't be there. Uh, whatever. He's lost some mustard on his on his juice. You know, throwing the rock. Who knows? Um, you know, Indy's going to be interesting. Ar's the guy. You know, I don't expect him to be that great overall. I think he'll have his moments, but do they have enough around him? But I don't think he's lost mustard on his juice, though. Rogers. Yeah, mustard on his juice. Yes, you know what I'm talking about. The juice, man. The juice when you're whipping that ball. The mustard so, on the yeah, juice. Yeah, mustard so on the juice. Yeah, he's got you know. the juice, but does yeah. he have the mustard? Does he on have the, the mustard yeah, on the yeah, juice? Exactly. You know what I'm saying, man. You got to whip it in there, right? <laughs> uh, you know, Cleveland. We'll see. They'll have a great defense. We know that, but we went toe to toe with them uh, last year. Uh, no one's going to expect Tennessee to be anything, but who knows? Who knows? What if Levis turns out to be a pretty good quarterback? 
I don't know. I don't know if I've seen that yet. Uh, you thought after his first start with four touchdowns, he was going to be pretty interesting, but he came back down to earth. You know, what's that team going to be like? I do think the AFC South is going to be pretty strong overall. I do. I think it's going to be come down to us and the Texans for sure, but don't count the other two out. I mean, remember last year, we didn't think the AFC South was going to be strong at all. They ended up being pretty darn good. So you never know, uh, you know, how they look on paper. The Bears don't, you know, whatever. I don't think they're that form, unless Caleb Williams turns out to be a total stud. Um, Pats? Eh, I'm not worried about the Pats. You worried about the Pats, Grammich? No. Nah, I'm not worried about the Pats. But I, I think the Bears are better than you're giving them credit for. Bears are going to be better, no doubt, but it's going to come down to the rookie QB. I mean, look, they got the weapons. Uh, they got a good defense they're putting together. The offensive line's gotten better. Uh, the running game's gotten better. You uh, probably Montgomery's M- Montgomery wasn't David Montgomery was never you know I don't think valued as much as he should have. But whatever, he's on he's on the Lions now. Uh, Bears will be DeAndre better, Swift. but they don't. Well, uh, no, Swift is now on the Bears. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Montgomery, I think, went to the Lions. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that'll be that's an upgrade. The Bears you know? got weapons though. Yeah, they, they do. I mean, Ke- they got Keenan Allen. Are you kidding me? Swift, uh, Keenan Moore. Allen. DJ Moore, DJ Moore, Roman Dunze. Yep. Um, their tight end, the guy for Cole Komet. Komet's good, they, very they, good. They got a good they got good weapons. Now yep. rookie QBs just traditionally don't have good seasons. Unless I know I know Stroud bucked that. I'm, trend well, you a bit, look, but. I mean, Mayfield had a good first year, right? He was pretty good his first year. Stroud had a really good first year. You know, I think it depends on the situation and what team you're in. Uh, but if Caleb catches some fire, that team could be could be interesting. Uh, Green Bay, yeah, I think Green Bay is going to be a tough out. Uh, look, the NFC North, we know this. They like to pound the rock. They like to push people around. Will, will we be physical? Doug says that's how they teach. Like I said on Tuesday, well, hopefully that means they're changing because they haven't taught it yet, in my opinion. Hopefully they're teaching it now, and that's what we're going to see in training camp, a little bit more physicality. Philly, will they bounce back? They had a, cata- a catastrophe just like us. Even worse. They were 10-1. and 10-1. That was not good the way they ended. Obviously, a big fall from there. Will they regroup and come back strong? Minnesota is a question mark with their QB situation. Uh, but they'll be tough up front. Detroit, we know Detroit's a tough team. You're up there. Uh, they're they're not a one hit wonder. They they're they're they they proved that last year. Um, humble and hungry. It's a good good way to be. Uh, Raiders. You know we'll see. I'm not worried about Gardner that much. But look, the guy in the right system gonna be okay. Then you finish with Tennessee and and at Indy. So uh, first four will be interesting. Uh, you know Miami. Look, Miami's gonna be tough. Everyone, you know it's funny. I love our fans. They poo poo though. Oh, we'll beat that. We'll beat that. We'll beat them. Uh, look, I went twelve and five last year when we went through it. I'm not going twelve and five this year. I'm not. I don't. This team, uh, although they've upgraded the roster, they've upgraded the talent. Until we see it all together, I'm not. I, I've been down that road before. It's almost like the. I know it's only one time, but the boy cried wolf. You know, I'm not. I'm not buying into the hype. And there's going to be a ton of hype. A ton. To almost nauseating amounts of hype around this team. It'll be local for the most part. The national media will come in too, but there'll be a, a, a ton of hype. And uh, look, I bought into it last year. I did. I bought into the well, wow, we're breaking records. We're doing all this stuff. Well, you, as we all know in football, you can never tell. You ne- you never tell. You know, if 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 things don't go your way, do you bounce back? You know, if things do go your way, can you handle the success? You know, um, being able to uh, produce at a high level week in and week out, knowing your assignments, all that stuff. So they're saying all the right things. It looks good on paper. Of course, I'm pulling for them. I want them to win them all. If they can, they won't be able to. But uh, I think around 10 wins, kind of my gut tells me. I got them in nine. Yeah. Nine wins. Yeah. Nine, 10. Hey, look, I do think they make the playoffs, so so if they get in with 10, I don't care if they win the division. I that doesn't I know you fans do, but I I don't. I just get in. And then anything can happen once you get in. And uh if they can do that, then it's a, a successful uh football season in my in my book. And then you never know and once in the playoffs. And how are we hitting our, are we hitting our stride? 
You know, like two years ago, although that first half against the Chargers didn't seem like it, came back great, of course, and won that game. Took KC to the ropes, 15 rounds pretty, pretty much. You know, we thought we were there. So can we get back to that point and, uh, and make something happen in the playoffs? Uh, I think we can, um, but I think some things have got to happen. And we'll see. Like I said, uh, on paper, everything looks better. No doubt about it. There, there's no question about it in my mind. They look great on paper, but we all know that doesn't mean anything. Paper catches fire very easily and burns into nothing. What? So there's four There's four things you got to be able to do successfully in football, right? Throw the ball well, run the ball well, stop the run well, stop the pass well. Yep. Right? Yep. Out of those four things... Which one would you consider the most important thing? Throw the ball well. Quarterbacks, it's it's all going to come down to the quarterback well, play. In general, in the NFL, I agree. But out of looking at this team, what they need to improve upon most. Stopping and running. So probably both. Because so the run game runs. sucked last year. But it starts with the pass. But look, it's going to come down to Trevor. It's going to come down to Trevor and everybody else. It's not just Trevor, but in, a, in essence, it is. And how does he perform as a quarterback? Well, the probably help figure out how we're going to do as an offense, which will help how we do as an t- entire team. Uh, look, the defense, you know, you, you t- down the stretch, yeah, you, they didn't play very well. But, man, they, they, they held their end of the bargain for a long time. They were phenomenal on third down all year long for the most part till the end. They really were, you know, and you can't, uh, you know, you, you can't get off the field – and then have to go back on after three downs because the Jags were terrible on third down, you know, or they didn't extend a drive. It's not always three downs, but the offense was very bet poor on third down. So that defense, you know, they get off. Yeah, here's the ball. Oh, got to go back on. Then we get off the field. Yes, here's the ball. Ah, you got to go back on. You know, that's the job. And uh, But, you know, hopefully that's not the case this year. I think it's got to come down. Uh, you know, look. Everybody's got to be better, including the quarterback. Um, You know, I mentioned on Tuesday the comment uh, that Doug had, you know, about being physical. You know, he says he kind of chuckles, and then he went on to say, paraphrase, I have written down, but I'm not going to read it word for word like I did on Tuesday. He's like, this is what we teach. We teach physical. And then he threw in there, you know, it's like, you know, a QB being more accurate. It's kind of a weird throw in, you know, it's another dig at his quarterback. And it's been a couple of digs in the offseason, intentional or not. I know he likes, don't he loves he loves him. He wants the kid to be great. And the kid has shown the glimpses of greatness, but that consistency has got to come in. And maybe this is the year. It's gotta be the year, you know. I mean, for him to really assert himself as a top QB in the game. And I mean top top five or six, and you can you can have your glasses on and, and love the Jags and say he is already. I, I don't agree with that. I don't think he is. Uh, I think he has the tools to be, no doubt. I think he has the tools to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. But as we all know, that the tools are only part of the equation. Uh, you know, having a great arm, being able to run tough, which is great, um, you know, but there's a lot more to that, you know. Just having the physical traits and tools doesn't always make you a great QB. So this is a big year for him, and I hope he. T- I think he will. I think he'll. I, hopefully, everyone's just focused. You got to mean. Look, I just I don't understand. Like the your job is being a professional football player. That's your job. That's your occupation. So you should do everything possible to be the best one. You got to do it almost year round. You get a little time off, but guess what? This is what this is your job. You're not an actor who, you know, goes, does 28 days of filming, takes a couple months off, goes to another one, maybe does three. You're not you're not that you're an entertainer, but you're not your your job is 10 months out of the year for the most part or April till hopefully the Super Bowl. So about 10 months now you get a little time off and that's your vacay. But other than that, you're working, man. You're working on your body. You're working on your mind. You're working on everything. And then when you come together as a team, then it all starts back up again. That They didn't have that last year, that focus. They didn't have that. You know, look, when you're 8'3", sitting on top of the AFC for a minute, you know, the message is, hey, we haven't done squat yet. That's the message. Our offense hasn't clicked. Our defense is doing good, but we need to be better. Our offensive line's been up and down. Here's the real story, guys. If you don't put in more effort, if you don't put in more focus and more energy, you're not going to end up the way you think you're going to end up. You don't just show up in this league. 
So I think that is the past, and I'm, I believe it's the, the present and future, that they will have that focus, and hopefully they all learned their lesson. Other Jaguar news and notes, Jag signed some veterans, Terrell Edmonds, defensive back, former first-round pick in the 2018 draft for the Pittsburgh Steelers at number 25, I think, or 28. Somewhere around there. Uh, Trey Flowers, another DB, gets signed. And Ty Summers, a backer slash special teamer, uh, gets signed. So going to be a lot of competition out there. No doubt about it, man. A lot of guys fighting for jobs. It'll be interesting to see uh, how that shapes up. But um, at the end of the day, um, I like, look, you know, they keep adding DBs. Isn't it funny? They keep adding safeties. And they got a lot of safeties, you know? They do. I don't really see the vision here, to be honest. I don't really know what's going on. No, I don't either. They must feel maybe you need more safeties to play that kickoff, you know? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you need uh, – uh, you're not totally sure on who we think you're sure on, right? I saw the big deal the uh, uh, Antoine Winfield got you know, down in Tampa. Immediately see Jack fans, oh, Cisco's going to get paid. You're like – Okay, maybe. I mean, he's he's got to show up this year too. He's got to have a big year too. It's a big year uh, for Andre Cisco, and he's a good player. I like him, no question about. It. Speaking of safeties, we had Donovan Darius as our guest last night, nine hundred four Pro Show with me and Killer Bees out at the Graffiti Burger Bar every uh, Thursday night um, at seven p.m. If you want to come out next week, is Austin Lane. Of course, our uh, former Jaguar defensive end and UFC heavyweight also does some media stuff, but we'll be focused on the fighting and uh, just basically everything that's in his life. Coach Tom Coffin and his daughter Kelly from the J Fund will be joining us on June 6th. We will take a break after Memorial Day. Got to head up to Massachusetts to uh, go see my my number two, my Kelsey girl, Um perform her uh, end of the year performance up at the CLI Conservatory in Massachusetts. So looking forward uh, to that. Marcus Stroud will be on as well. Jimmy Furyk, Brett Myers. It's going to be a great, great show every Thursday. But we're talking to Donovan. You know, I was thinking about this today, and, and it's a different it's a different world, right? Donovan used to intimidate back there. He was fierce. I mean, he, nobody wanted to get hit. From Donovan Darius. Remember that clothesline against the Packers? I thought it was great. I loved it. I loved him for that. I know he got fined a lot of money, but I thought it was awesome. You know, because the, there used to be, you don't get to come into my space just running free, man. You don't get to just be a, it near me and I don't I don't hit you. Well, it changed and, play calling. What's that? It changed. Sorry to cut you uh, off. Oh, yeah. It changed play yeah. calling. No, it, no, absolutely. And it is a different game, but we don't have – I don't know how many teams do, so I'd have to go through it, but we there's no presence on our back end where you're like, oh, man, this guy's – oh. Well, I can't wait to see him hit somebody. I mean, double D, 6'1", 225, 4'4". Four, four. That guy – it was a missile. And, you know, he, he talked about Atwater. Steve Atwater was the guy. Ronnie Locke, guys that he really, you know, looked up to and watched and wanted to play their game after him. And he did. He did. Again, it's a different time. But, man, I'd love to see some of that, you know. And it's it, look, why is it different? Because players are getting fined ridiculous amounts of money for knocking the you-know-what out of guys. And suspended and losing game checks. Yeah, and- so I, it, it's changed. It's changed, but it was great catching up with Double D. He's doing great. Um, you know, he's uh, he's happy, and he's coaching, and he's doing his camps, and we talked about his favorite hit. Who did he hit? The You know, he said Bettis. He put Bettis on his back once, and he was just like, he could. He was so ecstatic, you know, that he he said after the game, Bettis came up to him, had his, from that moment on had his respect. It was pretty pretty cool story. And then he tied. So, well, what was your favorite play? He's like, when I picked up the eighty two yarder for a touchdown fumble recovery against Baltimore, my rookie year. I'm like, oh yeah. That was a great one. Great to reminisce with the guys and, of course, Killer Bees there, but a great show, and uh, we do it every Thursday night. All right, looks like the stadium deal does get at least uh, – Agreed upon. I know there's got to be a final vote from city council. Then the NFL owners got to vote on it and uh, agree to it all. Look, at the end of the day, um, they, they they either got to get it done or they don't get it done. And, you know, the story there. But it looks like they're getting it done. And that's fantastic. The stadium looks great. Uh, man, it's going to take up a ton of that parking lot. Holy cow. I mean, that's a that's a mothership you know what i mean that's gonna be gigantic uh but awesome but awesome now now we just gotta fill it 
I will say this, and you know, look, I don't know. I'm just going to say it because I know there's the other side is, oh, no, 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 we need that. But the one thing I'm surprised of, and maybe the negotiations aren't over, but if I'm going to put up $700 million for a stadium, you're not taking a home game anywhere. You go away anywhere you want. You go to Timbuktu for all I care. But you, you're not taking a home game. That, I don't know. And I know, no, it's critical. It's not critical. It's not. It's good for the Jags. It's good for Chad Khan. It's good for the org. That part, but is it good for the city? Is it okay? Is there business done between us and the UK? Sure, I'm sure somewhere. I'm sure they're port at the port. There's probably some companies that have done some business. Probably others. But don't try to tell us that it's better than a home game in Jacksonville. No, it's, not. it's not. And if you're, you know what? If your team's winning, if your team's winning, they'll rock that place up. They will. Hundred percent. Back in the. I'm sorry, I'll bring it up. 96 through 99, when we were winning, going to the playoffs year, I mean, being a perennial playoff team, 72, 73, 75,000, standing room only sometimes, every every home game, right? So if you win, we'll come. So now you got to fill that thing. And I know concerts and all this other stuff. It's great. I, I'm Listen, I'm all for it because I want what? I want our Jags to stay here. We know the story. Now, just so you know, the owner's got to prove everything. You know, Shad Khan doesn't get it done. It's not like he can be like, all right, I'm out of here. They got they got to approve. Be like, okay, we'll approve you leaving, but where are you going to go and how are you going to get the stadium? It's all about the stadium. And like I said on Tuesday, and I said last night, or yesterday on the horse's mouth, that, look, every owner aside from who? The Jags, Buffalo, and Nashville all have brand spanking new stadiums, right? With a ton of sweet money, you know, a ton of revenue that they all keep. And they all want. So those other owners are sitting there going, hey, guys, let's go. What are you doing? Buffalo got their deal done, it looks like. Looks like uh, Nashville's going to get theirs done. And now it looks like we're going to get ours done. So everything's copacetic. But don't think for a second the other owners are sitting there going like, hey, let's go. Why aren't you getting your stadium deal done? Which, and, and if you're not, maybe we got to figure something out here because you need a brand new stadium and you need these big suites and you need you look all of it. And it's all good. Because we will get a Super Bowl. We will get the draft. It'll bring a lot of great greatness to the city. No question about it. And <clears throat> um, the Titans and Bills had an advantage that the Jacksonville didn't have, which is a big reason their deal got done before ours, which is that both of those deals got state funding. They did. They Whereas did. You're right. The Jaguars deal did not. So Florida's not doing that. Yeah, I think. Uh, so in the negotiations, I think Tennessee got five hundred million in state funding. Yeah. That's so, massive. Yeah, I mean that's almost the entire cut that yeah. the city of Jacksonville's paying. Correct. The, ja- the city of Jacksonville's paying seven. I wonder why uh, Florida doesn't contribute. I don't know. I, I, I don't, don't know, know the reasoning the, behind that. I'm not sure how that works. Like, why would one state contribute, another state does not, or maybe they they? I'm not sure. Ran out of the powder in the coffer if you know what i mean like enough money in that yeah that I, i'm not sure that what spot. I, I don't believe because the dolphins did their deal not that long ago i don't believe they got state funding either i think it's just like okay i don't think anyone does but yep. you, you know when you have that third that third party yep. you know cutting your costs dramatic, yep. cutting everyone's costs Big time. dramatically that's I mean, a that's massive like, amount that's a that's quarter huge. of the deal yeah so that's up there because they're two point one billion, I mm-hmm. think total. In my opinion, the Jaguars and the city of Jacksonville getting this deal done shows an even bigger commitment to the NFL through Jacksonville than the other two because they didn't have this third party helping them out. Yeah, yeah. In my opinion, yeah, I I, I agree with that. I agree with that. The city the city really had to buck up and make this happen, and they did. No doubt. Well, they haven't yet, but they're hoping. Well, city to. council's got to prove it, but yeah. like in terms of like Donna the Deegan's parameters office and everything, and yeah. Donna Deegan's office and the quote like quote Jacksonville like yep. the how Jacksonville is represented in this deal, they, for them to come to this agreement yeah, is, is big. It is big. It's really big, and it's going to be fantastic. So I'm glad it got done, and then I'm looking forward to seeing about everything else that's going to go on down there, you know, with the, the rest of the entertainment uh, sector. Need that, man. And, uh, well, yeah, big time. Need It'll that. be, listen, our, think about our city downtown, down there in 20, 30 years. Think about 15 even, 10 even. Just think about it. Think about well, maybe not 10, maybe 15, right? When everything's done, more people, it's going to be f- incredible. We're going to be a big, we're we're not a big city. Area-wise, we're massive. We're the largest, but 
Downtown's not a big city yet, no, but it'll it's get not. there, and it's going to be absolutely spectacular. When's speaking of that? When's the last time you've been out in downtown Nashville, like Broadway area? Uh, recently, uh, well, not that re- no, I shouldn't say recently. Like uh, six months ago, when I drove uh, my Avery up there. When was the last time you had been before that? Never. No, okay, never. yeah, so, no, so that was my. Have anything yeah, I don't think. I, to, well, we we passed dude. through Nashville, spent a night there on our way to Indy. Uh, we had the uh, we went to the Super Bowl, bunch of us, so we stopped there for the night and then went up. The reason I bring that up is, I was there a couple months ago for a wedding, and obviously I went to high school there, so I'm yeah. familiar with how the downtown. We used to go to Preds games all the time. Yeah, dude, the growth it's it's had yeah. in the last. I'm talking like two years. There's like construction two, cranes years. all over that city. At least Everywhere, there were when I was uh, I was up there. Man, and I'm telling you, man, it yep. was it was a Friday night. We're walking around. There's a thousand bars in that yep. area, right? There's a billion of them, and they're big, like big, spacious bars, yep. filled to the brim. Oh yeah, all of them, all of them, all the people coming in from out of town that yep. are in town just. And think about what that's doing for the economy, man. Ridiculous, like, yeah. dude. The- well, and, and and I liked it for a night. Now, my young younger self would like it four nights in a row, of course. <laughs> um, but uh, that's like Vegas almost. You know, it's like it's almost like whoa. We I, we were in Al Dean's place for a while eating, and the music there is incredible. You oh, think yeah, they're yeah. super duper stars, and they're very good, right? Man, the, the, the music's incredible. There are nobodies that are fantastic, right? Then we come outside and it's just like, we're like, well, I grabbed my wife's hand. I was like, whoa, there's a lot of people around here. It was pretty wild. But yeah, no, right. They, they, look, that's what Jacksonville will be. Like I said, with this deal being done, with everything else that's going to be done, we are going to host the Super Bowl again, whether you care about that or not. Uh, the draft is coming. There's no doubt we'll get the draft at some point. Uh, so all good stuff, man. All good stuff. I tell you what, man, it's exciting, and uh, I am uh, I am glad. Now, now it's what the team. Let's go. This is big year for for all of us, for all of us. Because I'll tell you what, new stadium or not, you don't win. Fifty five thousand will show up every week. Maybe fifty eight. Maybe sixty. You win, it'll be a tough ticket to get. That's how. That's how it goes. We didn't always win in the beginning. I remember guy early in 96, before we went on our run, guys on the team were helping buying up tickets to keep the game from being blacked out locally on television because back then wow. you had the blackout. That was before. We were like one in three or one in five, whatever, two in five, whatever we were. And then we started winning. Next thing you know, it's packed. It's packed. It's packed. We go to the wild card. I was talking to a guy yesterday, a friend of mine, uh, at an event at the uh, the Top Golf. He's like, I remember parking on the the the, the um, airport road and walking in, like just walking into the terminal. And and I remember coming off the plane after we beat Buffalo in the playoffs in '96, the wild card. There were people everywhere in the terminal. You couldn't. We had to get an escort. We couldn't get by. They, Crazed lunatic fans were walking right through them. That was the last time Coffin took us through the uh, terminal. We uh, then pulled up on a tarmac after that. But it was. It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. And uh, we all know, look, uh, a year ago, not last year, two years ago, 2017, when we have those kind of magical seasons, it, it's magical. It really is. And, and I know it is for other cities, but they're so big. They're not a nice community like we are, smaller community that, that thrive and, you know, live and die off our Jaguars. You know what I mean? When we win, it's ultra special. So now it's up to the team to get it done. Of course, Team Tommy Mac brings you catching up with Tommy Mac. You see my Coconut Joe's hot sauce shirt. That's right. They've got some great hot sauces. Working on getting them out there in the public eye. You can go to Family Tradition SpecialtyFoods.com to pick them up, whether it's the sriracha, the mango, or the uh, the other really spicy one, which just lost my mind. But they're absolutely fantastic. The Sriracha is my favorite, and uh, you should try them out. The great, great company working on some beef jerky. We'll get that out there. They got some dry rubs too that are absolutely fantastic. Chris Rosero's bail bonds will keep you out of jail. Well, you'll get thrown in jail first before you call him, but he'll get you out in a blink. The number one name in the bail game, 822-2245. Plug it into your phone. Graffiti Burger Bar. Home of the 904 Pro Show every Thursday night. I tell you what, I had the burger. Made a McManus burger last night. 
Yeah, how about that? They came up. They're like, hey, Tommy, you want to make a burger? I was like, yeah, let's make a burger. What do you want on it? Brings me the menu. I'll go, all right, burger, clearly. Um, I went with bacon, because I love bacon. Great, great uh, first choice. You're starting off really, bacon, really yeah, strong. Yeah, I mean, come on, give me some bacon. I went with avocado. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. And then I threw in Swiss cheese, and that's it. I took the lettuce and tomato off. I don't. I actually, you know, I, I usually, you know, what's funny when I get that, I just take the lettuce leaf and eat it. And I'm not a tomato guy, so I take that off, and then I just got my burger with meat. I and do cheese. the exact opposite. Do you really? I get no lettuce. Okay. I get tomato. Okay. I take the tomato off and eat it. Okay. You eat the tomato just yeah, separate. I, I yeah. like I like tomatoes. I don't love them typically on a burger. Yeah. But I like them in general, so I get them and just eat them. Okay. Let it, I don't like lettuce at all on a burger. Yeah, I, I'm more lettuce than tomato, but that avocado, man, that's something. That no, ripe avocado. Yeah, avocado. That, oh, that's a good so burger. Good. Thanks, buddy. Get it at Graffiti Burger Bar. It'll be on the menu soon. And then B's got Killer B's Philly Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's fantastic. That's you had a great time last night hanging out. J Dog Junk Removal, they were in town. Got a chance to meet with them yesterday. They're part of the hauling team, too. So listen, you uh, you builders out there, new homes, reconstruction, what have you, you need someone to put their bins out there and haul it away for you. Check out J Dog Junk Removal and Hauling. 844 Get J Dog. Michael Nick is a State Farm Agency. He's been my agent for over 20 years. He should be your agent as well. Give me a try. All, hey, look, free quote. It's not going to cost you anything. 777 6888. Three sevens, a six, three eights. Boom. Michael Nick is State Farm. You got home, you got auto, you got life, and supplemental health all under one roof with Michael Nick is Azar Sausage and Dewey Hot Mild. It's the best. Go to Win Dixie. Go to your local grocers. It's absolutely fantastic when you make it like a like a hot dog you put it in with chicken put it in your chili you put it everywhere it's absolutely fantastic carpet man flooring of course home of lvp carpet man's lvp that's luxury vinyl planking at the highest quality at the lowest prices and uh, not only that they've got tile they got carpet and they got hardwood flooring all for you code ninjas.com get your kids into a code ninjas camp this summer they're going to learn all about coding building video games and then getting outside and getting some exercise four great locations for you to choose from go to code ninjas.com salt air inn and suites of course right there by the beach yeah, a beautiful boutique hotel with concierge service. I said that kind of like I was French for a minute there. But, yeah, they bring that kind of service to the table to you four blocks from the beach in Atlantic Beach. I want to thank Adaptive Jacks for being my marketing and branding partner, man. They are absolutely fantastic. Lo- located in Jacksonville Beach, they are my production team for the 904 Pro Show. And Jollyram Hotels, I tell you about them all the time now, lately. Down in St. Augustine, you want to visit the oldest city? Go check out JalaramHotels.com and, of course, 1010XL Podcast Studios. Beautiful. All right, we're going to wrap it up um, with uh, the schedule just a little bit more. Um, we have surprised only two primetime. And they're both away. And by the way, I heard on the radio this morning, 1010XL, of course, no back-to-back home games. Interesting. That'll be an interesting thing, but uh, what'd you think? I like that it's week three. Monday night football, week three. Home away, who cares? You're on Monday night football. I know the fans care, so I'm sorry, fans. I'm not talking about that. But as a player, oh, let's go. Because one thing you do look at, you don't go through. We were talking about this last night in the show, me, B's, and Double D. You don't go through the schedule. I go, oh, we got this. We got this. No, what you're looking at is you're looking at primetime games and the bye week. Where is it at? That's all you really care about. That's all we really cared about as a player. How many times are we on national TV and when's that bye week so we can figure out when that rest period will be, uh, quote unquote, rest period. But I like the week three. Uh, look, I like this. You know, the, the NFL is a tricky little bastard, aren't they? Think about this. Who had the biggest collapses last year? Philly and Jacks. Who's playing this year? On national TV, Philly and Jack, you know what I mean? Don't think it doesn't happen for a reason. They're sick and twisted up there in the NFL when they get into the schedule. They want those rivalries. They want that stuff happening. I mean, come on, like we're finishing with Tennessee and at Indy. They know it's going to be a tight race. They just feel like it's going to be a tight race, and those games are going to be ultra important uh, for all the teams in the AFC South. So 
I like it. They're perverts up in the league office. They, they, like, yeah. they like being sick I mean, and think twisted. About it. Probably a bunch of nerds sitting around. All right, look. Ooh, this story. That's let's get this, this guy left this team. Let's get them together. You know, this there's a beef between these guys. They went at it, you know, early. Let's get them together. Two colossal failures in the second half of the season. Let's get them together. I mean, that's how they think, right? But it is theater. Yeah. And that's what we want as fans, don't we? Yeah. We want that theater, we can, especially on national TV. Nothing worse than a dud on national TV where there's no, like, you know, eh, any storyline, really. And then they don't perform. You know what I mean? It's just like, eh, shut it off, you know? Yeah. I, In terms of the primetime games, the number did not surprise me. I thought two was, if you had asked me before how many I thought we were going to get, I would have said two. I, I said two. Some people saying three. I would have I thought, thought two was a good number. I would have thought one of the two would have been a Thursday. So I'm yeah. a little surprised it's a Sunday and Monday, which is better, way better, way better. Um, I'm not necessarily surprised they're both away when you consider that we got two homes last year. Um, Let me ask you this because I thought of this uh, last year: five prime time, prime time games or prime time teams, which were prime time games. For yeah, the most yeah, part. yeah. We went one and four. You think that factored into? You know, now, now, granted, the Cincinnati game was unbelievable. Like, everyone loved that game. We didn't love it because we're like, who the hell is Jake Browning ripping our defense apart? But we loved Trevor that day. And the audience, the national audience, loved but that from game. An unbiased from an unbiased. From an unbiased. That was yeah. a fantastic game to watch. Are you yeah. kidding me? That was an incredible game to watch. So, you know, they did. It's not like they were duds. I didn't mean that. But they didn't win against the top five, you know, in, the, in those big games. So um, I don't. In my opinion, no. I think it was more about the the way they ended the season and yeah. not being yeah. a playoff a playoff team. From How many before. did Philly get? Do we know? Probably a lot. Yeah, but, but they're they, they that's don't. they've won Super Bowls, right? Super Bowl, bowl. Well, yeah, bowl. Right, right, right. But but they're they're a way bigger market, and they're in they're in the only real. In my opinion, they're in the only real division in the league that has like real, true, like historic rivalries. Cowboys, Reds, yeah, the, but the Redskins those, don't get a lot. But those four teams yeah. really hate each other. They got history. They do, and they they're do. all big markets too. Yep, that's true. DC, New York, Dallas, Philly, massive. So those in so they always get. Um, yeah. I bet if I had to guess, I bet Philly probably has four. So the smaller market teams got to win more than the bigger market teams. I mean, look at Carolina. They got zero, and they shouldn't get any. Yeah. Who the hell wants to watch them other than their fans right now? If That if may they change. Were, if they were not god-awful last year, they probably would have gotten something. Yeah. And if they were in New York instead of Charlotte, they would have gotten something. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. It's, it, it, look, I understand why they do it. I, I get it. I, I know you got to do things for ratings. Um. In my opinion, do I need to watch the New York Jets six times? Right. No. Like the, I, I get the principle, and I get why they do. I, I just think they go overboard with. Well, the first of all, it's Aaron Rodgers. That's why they're getting. Pro- I mean, the opening day is Aaron Rodgers. They, if he comes back strong and puts them, you know, who knows if he does play well, they could be somewhat of a contender. The defense is phenomenal. They've added weapons. They've added offensive line help. So if he comes through. Yeah, they may be one of those teams on the, I don't think vying for the AFC championship, but making their waves, you know, and you're going to want to, who doesn't want to see Aaron Rodgers on primetime TV if he's playing well? He's fun to watch. I'll tell you this, I think the Buffalo's interesting th- week three. You know why? Because it's not Josh Allen versus Trevor. It's Josh Allen versus Josh Allen. Think about that. You don't think they thought of that? Damn right they did. Of course. Right. And if and if and the, they're going to go in with Trevor and Josh Allen to the Bills and then they're going to be like, well, if that doesn't work out. Guess what? We got Josh Allen. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Josh Allen versus Josh Allen. Who's going to win this time? Because I think Josh Allen for the Jags has been the victor. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, that's good. That is right. Correct. It has been, especially that year. We beat him. What? Nine to six. Josh had a phenomenal game. Josh all Allen, over the place. Bill's Josh Allen has only beaten the Jaguars once. Yeah, how about that? I think he's one in – is it one in three? He's one in three or one in two against us. Yeah. Well, Beat I, us in 2018. Yeah. Um, But in 2021, the urban year where they beat him that right, year. Right. Beat him last year. I, yeah. I think there's another one too. Yeah, I can't I remember. Don't, I don't remember. But I know the 96 game when we played like crap, but that day we had a phenomenal day. There's two teams 
that for whatever reason, the Jaguars just always have their number. Yeah. And it's the Bills and the Steelers. Well, Steelers were 50 50, aren't we? We beat them up there and they beat us down here, too. But when you consider how the Steelers have been since the yep. Jaguars have been around versus how the Jaguars have been, yep. for it to be 50 50 is crazy. Yeah, right. It should be 95 5 Steelers. Yep. Well, listen, I know when we were uh, early days, the whole goal, initial goal, was to win the Central and you had to beat Pittsburgh to win it. They controlled the AFC Central back in the day, and that was how we were built to go. That's why they drafted Donovan Darius to come up and stick Jerome Bettis and put him on his backside. That's why they drafted Fred Taylor as well, because he owned, right. he owns Three River Stadium. He does. He said, "What did he say? He could have had three hundred yards rush. What did we say? He was hung over that day." <laughs> I never went out the night before. It's funny, man. I, I hear these stories. A guy I could never, I would never be able to function, I don't think. I guess your adrenaline just gets going. You know, I always needed the night off because I went out also, hard Friday. But you were you were in a different spot on the roster than guys like Freddie. Yeah. Which to me, if you're a I always get to, when I whenever I heard like like remember the London stuff when the guys got in trouble yeah. for going out and all that in trouble was, they got thrown in jail yeah. they didn't want to pay their tab and it was mostly like stars but I think yeah. like Chris Claybrooks was there or something yeah when those guys do it it yeah. always shocks me well because listen like, I mi- I missed me and three of my buddies which weren't stars either we missed the team meeting before the uh, AFC wild card game against Buffalo. I left that out. We uh, let's just say went into Canada and uh, you know we're trying to find a good meal, um, <laughs> which we did, but we uh, we arrived late. And uh, thank goodness we won because we were only fined two hundred fifty bucks, which was good. If we wow. would have lost, it would have been a lot worse. Would have been in the thousands for sure. Imagine hearing in any capacity on like NFL Network, so and so fined two hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, right. I know <laughs> today. And by the way, two of us, it was me and Mitchell, uh, and this is Coughlin's second year, and like, he's like, out of all the people, you two missed my meeting? Like, first playoff game team meeting night before the game, and two of my guys from Boston College aren't even in the room. He was pretty pissed. Pete was so scared. <laughs> me and Pete were roommates. I was like, listen, just after your offensive meeting, just bolt upstairs. Don't go to team snack. You're not going to eat. Just go to your room. We'll go to our room. We'll hide out. Nobody, He's not going to come get us. And he didn't. But the next morning, he approached. Ah, it was funny. I was standing against the wall, and I'm reading the paper. Because I, I know he's, he's going to come over. And all of a sudden, I look down, and I see two feet pointing at me. And I pull it down. And, and there he is. He's just looking at me. He's just pissed he's like how could you miss my meeting and before i could say anything he just shook his head and walked away and i was like oh immediately my linebacker coach comes up because i was starting at the time linebacker coach comes up and he's like hey let that go don't let that get in your head i'm like it's it's fine i'm i'm fine <laughs> we had a great time by the way <laughs> it's too bad we were late did the coaches do a lot of good cop bad cop with with coughlin was he, yeah but yeah yeah but because you know look when you, you know, one coach is just willing to be bad cop all the time yeah <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure it's easy well, to be good cop as a position coach you know i, I think there's something to like like, Dick Geron, our defense coordinator, hardly ever screamed. Like, he never raised his voice, hardly ever. And if he did, it was like, man, you really ticked him off because he was a quiet kind of guy. Former player, 12-year player, great defensive back in the NFL, um, but he wasn't a screamer. Dom Capers could scream a little bit, but that wasn't his, you know, he was more like, hey, guys, this is how you do it, and you got to do it this way, or we're going to find somebody else that does. You know, very, you know what I mean? Um, my linebacker coach is more like Coughlin, so if he got his ass chewed, we knew the second he walked in the door that this was going to be a tough meeting because he's just coming in huffing and puffing. So that basically means he just came from another meeting where he got ripped or something, and then he comes down and, hey, you know, what do they say? What what tr- goes downhill? <laughs> it rolls downhill? Yeah, that was that. So, But there were. And then L- L- Lucius Summon, the outside backer coach, he would get hot at times, but he would always come over and kind of smooth things out. So you kind of need that. You know, that's a good way to build your team, I think, when you got the a CEO being this way and the others can kind of, you know, massage it a little bit, you know? Because not everybody can handle that kind of coaching. It's like kind of the problem with Doug is Doug is Doug is good cop. Way too good cop. You know? I think that's – I hope it's changed. I got – look, Doug, I hope 
I hope you win, man. I hope you guys win. I hope you do change some things. I think it, 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 look, we talk about accountability all the time. And just think about it. I know I said it earlier, but look, just take Calvin Ridley, right? Was he ever sat down for not doing what he's supposed to be doing? Ever. Did he ever miss time? Did you ever bench him? You know? No, you denied the fact that he was running the wrong routes when you could clearly see there were plenty of times that he did not know what he was doing. You could tell. And he'd just stand there. He'd run the wrong route. He'd be in the wrong spot. You should never have two guys in the right in the same spot in a, in a, in a passing uh, play. Did they ever sit him down? No. So what does that say to everybody else? Or the D coordinator gets up. No, that was an us. We were pot. We, I guess that wasn't us. Yeah. Hey, if the coach thinks that way, guess what? Even if it's not, it's subliminal, right? You, it's in your mind. A coach is laid back. I guess I can be laid back, right? So I hope that changes. I think it changes with Nielsen. I do. And I, I, I don't care if he's a screamer, but I, I don't mind a little screaming. But it's all about that accountability. And hopefully they learn their lesson and they're, it's going to be all good this year. And all the accountability, all the talent, everything on paper, everything's going to come together, the stadium, the schedule, everything. And we're going to have a kick-ass year. So that's the hope, and we hope uh, that happens. All right, tonight, Dad Bods at uh, our first spot. Can look forward to it. First time going back to the original, uh, second time. Uh, we played inside last time, but we're down at the Palm Valley American Legion. They've redone the bar area. Uh, they're putting in money. We're doing a benefit to raise more money to even fix it up even further. It's a great, great spot. All veterans, of course, are always welcome. Benefit show. So the dad bots. We've got two, three new songs. Marshall Tuck, uh, Tucker's um, um, Can't You See? Sorry, big dummy. Can't you see what that woman's been doing to me? Mr. Brightside from the Killers. And uh, Sugar, We're Going Down by Fall Out Boy. So those are all new to the repertoire of the dad bots. I got to go and haul ass into the 1010XL radio studios to join my pals. Mike Dempsey, Fat Tony, and Pockets for Jaguars today right there on 1010XL. Have a great day, everybody. Be safe out there. Be cool. Uh, Have a great weekend. Wear your sunscreen. Eat some good food and take care of one another. We'll see you next time right here on Catching Up with Tommy Mack. Peace and love.